Kia's first generation K900 was not the best seller in the state, so I'm willing to bet that a lot of you didn't even know the Korean automaker sold a luxury sedan. Yet here it is again in its second generation, and it might just be the best luxury sedan that you've never heard of. Grab Shotgun with me in this top of the line VIP model, and let's take her for a spin. Kia's motto for the last couple of years has been the power to surprise, and when you settle in behind the wheel of the K900, it is surprisingly luxurious. I mean, you've got these nice Napa leather seats, there's nice matte wood all over the place, there's even like metal finish on the grills of the speakers and on the dashboard. It's a really good looking cabin. None of that cheap stuff that you kind of typically associate with the brand. I mean, take for example the seats. They're all power adjustable in this car, but the driver's seat has 20-way power adjustability. Let me look at how much vertical adjustment I have on this thing. It just keeps on going. I think I'm gonna touch the ceiling. There it is, touching the ceiling. That's crazy. Now in Kia's home country of Korea, the K900 actually serves as a limousine. Not like a stretch limo, sort of like a black car that you'd chauffeur people around in. So this VIP model we're in inherits a really nice set of back seats. They're both power adjustable, but the one on the passenger side has access to a chauffeur mode. And what that does is it slides the front passenger seat forward and down to maximize the amount of leg room that you get back there while also keeping the seat out of the driver's way. I can still see the rear view mirror when it's pushed all the way forward. That's really cool. Now back up front and center in the dashboard, we've got a 12.3 inch version of Kia's Uvo infotainment system. We really like this software on smaller screens and on this gigantic display where it can really spread out. It just really works well. You can use it as a touch screen or you can use a controller down here on the console. And Android Auto and Apple CarPlay are standard, so even if you don't like it, you can bring your own tech. Now the VIP model, in addition to the nicer back seats, also has a massive 12.3 inch digital instrument cluster that is customizable with a variety of different gauge layouts. Basically, they sort of change their design depending on the drive mode that you're in. So in sport, you get something dark and sporty. In comfort or eco, you get something cool and relaxing. And in the custom mode, you get this really cool purple lightsaber looking thing. <laughs> Now speaking of the drive modes, the Kia K900's performance is based on the same underpinnings of the Kia Stinger, which we love. That means under the hood we've got a 3.3 liter twin turbocharged V6 engine making 365 horsepower and 376 pound-feet of torque. And in its sportiest mode, this thing pulls. Now, full disclosure, this isn't the first time I've driven this car. I've actually been able to drive the Korean version of it over in Seoul near Kia's R&D facility. And the K900 they have over there has a really soft suspension. But the one that we have here in the States, this one we're in now, actually has a suspension setup that is a lot more in common with the Stinger. And that means that it's airing more on the side of sports sedan, not big comfy cloud. I wouldn't go so far as to call this car nimble, she is pretty big, but I would say that it does feel athletic, and that's partially due to the gobs of power that we've got going to the all-wheel drive system, which is standard, and the adaptive suspension, which in its sportiest mode is actually pretty firm. It's keeping this car nice and flat in the corners. Now as Kia's flagship model, this bad boy is going to come pretty much fully loaded at every trim level. There are only two to choose from. But that means that no matter which way you go, you're going to get all of the safety technology in Kia's arsenal out of the box. You can check out our full review over on theroadshow.com to learn more about all of that. Overall, I feel like the K900 is definitely packing a very luxurious cabin, a lot of technology that I like, and I especially like how they've adapted this big comfortable sedan into something that's actually fun for the North American market. I think it's the winner, but only time will tell how well it'll sell. With the K900, Kia is targeting what it calls the stealth wealth segment. People who want really nice things, but still want to look frugal in front of their neighbors. And it's priced it accordingly. Expect the base K900 luxury to start at around $60,000, very well equipped. And this VIP model with its fancy chauffeur rear seat to top out the line at around $64,000. Not a terribly bad price to combine Kia Stinger performance with a luxurious cabin like this. When I say well-equipped, I mean we didn't even have time to scratch the surface of all the features this car offers. So check out our full review over on theroadshow.com for the full rundown. But before you go, hit that subscribe button for even more cool videos from the Roadshow crew.